Hey friends, Matt aka Martilm here. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favourite Ableton Live devices, Shaper MIDI. I have cats right there. They're um... Oh, there she goes. Before we get started, if you like the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new, and if you really enjoy this video and my content, feel free to head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can buy me a coffee, support me and the channel, and get really cool stuff if you decide to become a member. But without any further ado, let's jump right into the computer and take a look at why Shape MIDI is such a powerful and awesome tool. Okay, so what is Shaper MIDI. Well, Shaper MIDI is a MIDI effect included inside of Ableton Live 11 Suite, and it's a Max for Live device that allows you to create custom shapes and LFOs that you can basically map to any parameter inside of Ableton Live. We can find it under the MIDI effects category in our browser. If we go over to MIDI effects, we can see here Shaper MIDI right down the bottom if we're in Ableton Live 11 Suite. Um, it is not available inside of Standard or Intro um, unless you have the Max for Live add-on for standard. Um, but here we can see we have Shaper MIDI. And I've just got a blank track here inside of Live, a blank MIDI track with a MIDI monitor and a wavetable on it. And I'm just going to load up Shaper MIDI onto this track. Now we can see that when I load up Shaper MIDI, we have a few kind of main areas here. This is the main area in the middle where we get to basically draw custom shapes, very similar to if you've ever used anything like Serum or Vital or Pigments or Face Plant. It's that same kind of approach to using an LFO where we get to draw in this kind of custom shape and then map that parameter or map that shape to anything else. We have a bunch of preset shapes down the bottom. I'm gonna click on this one to reset it. And we've got a whole bunch of other stuff here like the speed or the rate of the shape, the depth of it, whether it's controllable by velocity or not, the amount of it, whether it loops. Um, there's even some cool echo stuff as well. And whether or not we snap to the grid here is really cool as well. We can turn off snapping so we can just kind of free draw it there. We can change the grid size all the way up to 16. I kind of wish we could change the vertical grid as well, but we can only change the horizontal grid. And you can also randomize the shape, which I think is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and actually map shape MIDI to a parameter here on the wavetable. So I currently have this wavetable sound, which just is a basic sawtooth wave running through the noise unison mode. And we can see that whenever I hit or press down a MIDI key, we're triggering this Shaper MIDI. So I'm going to engage the first uh, shape here, and I'm going to map this to the filter of the wavetable. So now we get some filter movement as if we'd mapped an envelope to the filter. And now if you have a look at wavetable... And because we have the velocity enabled here on Shaper MIDI, when I hit a harder velocity, it's actually increasing the depth that this shape is controlling the, uh, the filter of the wavetable. which is really cool. If I didn't want that, I could turn that down. And I can also change the rate of the shaper here as well. I can switch it between uh, synced and milliseconds, which allows us to, when we start to use it as an LFO, create some really interesting patterns. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna change this from one shot mode here to loop mode, just by clicking this bottom right button. And now when I hold down a MIDI note, it's gonna continuously loop. And I can change the rate. in synced all the way up to 164th note, or I can go to milliseconds all the way from 100 milliseconds to 20 seconds, which is pretty cool. And we can also change the modulation amount up here. We can go in filter frequency where our mapped control is. We can change the minimum value and the maximum value that the shape goes between. And of course we can change the shape itself. I could make some interesting movements here. I can hold down the alt key to create a curve. Um, I, can, I can shift click to remove points. And let's make this curve here like that. I'm gonna turn back on snapping which is interesting. And I don't know, let's just hear how this sounds when I loop this. I 
and let's sync it maybe to a one quarter note. Let's go one half note. And now what's really cool is I can also map this to another parameter. If I go here to this top right little icon, I've got a bunch of different places. I can actually map this to eight different places. And I could map this to something like the resonance of filter one as well. I could even maybe change the wave table shape here to something else and I could map that to the wavetable position as well and I can change the minimaxes independently and if I engage another filter potentially in my wavetable here maybe a high pass filter I can also map this to the high pass filter and I can just invert the ranges here so it goes from 0 to 100 or 100 to 0 rather and now I've got a really interesting rhythmic sound. So that's kind of a basic overview of Shaper MIDI and you can kind of see where you can go with it from here. But I want to show you some interesting things that you can do with it as well as where you can kind of improve it a little bit. So one annoying thing about Shaper MIDI in its current state is that every time you trigger the envelope or the shape to move, it actually creates an undo step. So you'll see up here, if I go to my undo menu, we actually have an undo change to the trigger. And every time I trigger the LFO or the movement of the shaper, it actually creates an undo step, which is a little bit annoying. Another thing that's a little bit annoying is that we actually don't have access to change or automate the minimum and maximum values of each of the mapping destinations. So that's why what I actually did is went and created a Martilns Shaper device and I I've uh, basically fixed those issues. So actually, I'm gonna come across this second wavetable track here and I'm gonna add a Martilns Shaper MIDI. Now, if you wanna download this, I'll actually include a free download link in the description. So you can just head over and download this device, which is the fixed version of Shaper MIDI. Um, hopefully it gets officially updated soon, but in the meantime, this is what we have. And now if I just make some movements here, for instance, You'll see I just moved the f uh, filter here on this wavetable. If I go up to my edit menu, we have undo change to filter one frequency. And now if I trigger this shaper, we don't have any undo steps for the triggering of the shaper here now, which is really fantastic. And now if I right click the minimum and maximum values, we actually get the ability to edit the MIDI maps and the key maps. And if I switched over to my uh, arrangement view here, for instance, if I right clicked, I could show automation and I could automate this maximum or minimum parameter. Or if I grouped this to a uh, MIDI effect rack or an instrument rack, I could actually map this to a macro, which is really, really fantastic and provides some really awesome uh, opportunities for being able to use Shaper MIDI in a really creative and performative way. So as an example of how we can use Shaper MIDI in a really interesting way, I'm gonna go here to this third wavetable track, which I just have a MIDI clip on that's a single note playing at E1. So I'm gonna just play this. It doesn't sound like anything fantastic. I'm gonna use this as the basis for a cool little sequenced sound. So I'm gonna add on Martilm's Shaper MIDI here. And what I'm gonna do is drag the velocity all the way down to zero. And I'm actually then gonna add an arpeggiator MIDI effect. I'm gonna set the arpeggiator rate to 16th notes and the rate of Martilm's Shaper here to one bar and then pull the grid all the way up to 16. So now we effectively have the same grid value here as we do speed of our arpeggiator. Maybe you can see where this is going. So I'm gonna change the arpeggiator style here to chord trigger. And then I'm also going to add a pitch MIDI device after this arpeggiator. And then finally, we're going to create a random shape here in this MIDI. And then I'm gonna map this shape to the pitch of this pitch device. Now, if I play a MIDI note, such as this one that's in here in this MIDI clip already, we've started to create a little sequence, which is really cool. 
but currently the range of this sequence is massive. So what I'm going to do is actually change the minimum and maximum values here of this pitch mapping. So I'm going to change this all the way up to, let's say, 45, and let's go 55 for the max value. So that kind of puts it within an octave either side of the note that's being played. So now if I play the clip... And now if we want to conform this to a scale, for instance, I can add the scale MIDI device here. And I'm actually going to add the C minor scale MIDI device and just change the bass note to the bass note that we have in our MIDI clip, which is an E. And so now when we play this MIDI clip, really cool. And then we can start adding some more Shaper MIDIs here to actually just modulate some of the other parameters. And what's really cool about Shaper MIDI is that we're pretty much not limited to how many we can add in at all, which is really fantastic. So I'm going to add another Martilne's Shaper MIDI here. And it doesn't really matter where I put this, but I'm going to put it after the arpeggiator. Actually, let's put it before the arpeggiator because I want to map this one to the filter. So I can map this to the filter of the wavetable device here. And I can maybe create some kind of random movement here. Now turn the velocity down and, and also change the rate potentially as well and hit play. What does this sound like? I'm also going to loop this. And I'm going to loop the first one as well, just to make sure that if we have anything that's longer, we're not kind of, you know, ending the sequence. I can also add some smoothness and jitter to this uh, shaper here. So add some jitter, which is basically some randomness and some smoothness, which just smooths out that randomness a little bit. Now I'm going to add another shaper MIDI after this arpeggiator effect. And I'm going to map this to the dry wet amount of our delay here. And again, we can just add some random movement using this random control here. And actually, I'm just going to loop this too. Not that it's going to matter because we have the notes being continuously triggered, but now we have something that changes the delay consistently on this. And we can pull down the uh, maximum amount so we're not going all the way up to 100% dry wet. And now another interesting thing that we could do is we can map this first shaper here, or even if we add another shaper after this arpeggiator, I'm actually just going to map this shaper right here to the random control of this second shaper, which is controlling the delay. And now we can change the min and maximum values to change how often this kind of randomness uh, triggers on this second shape of MIDI. And then we can even do cross randomness. So I can now map this second shape of MIDI to control the random of this first shape of MIDI. So we've got one triggering the random shape of the other, and then the other one triggering the random shape of the first one. And then why not, let's also map this to maybe the second filter on our wavetable. And if we want to continuously generate new sequences, we can also map these random ones to the random of the shaper MIDI device that's triggering the sequence. It might get a little bit too much, um, but you can kind of see how this can get really, really crazy really, really quickly, and it creates a whole lot of interesting creative possibilities. And this is why Shaper MIDI is one of my favorite devices, Max for Live devices, inside of Ableton Live, and it's so overlooked. There's been the Shaper audio effect around for a while, but the MIDI version, I think, is so much more powerful than the audio version. And I just think it's a tool that everyone should get around. So uh, yeah, start using it. I think it's really fantastic. So there you have it. That is a quick overview of one of my favorite and one of what I think is one of the best Ableton Live, Max for Live devices there is, Shaper MIDI. If you want to download the Martilne's Shaper MIDI, which doesn't have the undo step on the trigger of the on the envelope or the shape, and also allows you to automate and map 
the minimum and maximum values. You can head, there'll be a link down in the description where you can go and download that. It'll be over on my Buy Me A Coffee page, completely free. Feel free to go and grab that. Otherwise, if you like this video, of course, feel free to drop a like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And if you wanna watch more, I recommend you check out a recent video, which will link here in the end card. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you all in the next video.